Niki, Poco. How do I pronounce your name? You pronounce it Kociacic. It is my maiden name. It's oh, a very okay. common name in, in Slovenia. Okay. I shortened it to K. All right, wait, wait. The first one. The first one. Is the first one is Nike. It should Nike. be Nike. It is a Greek name, a, a victory, the goddess oh, of good. victory. Okay. I like the sports shoes. Yes, exactly. Oh, God. <laughs> Nike. It's like Puma. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Nike. And then the K is your... K is my maiden name, Kociacic, and Pokoran is my name. But you publish with Pokoran. I publish with Pokoran because in, it's almost, it seems very difficult to be, to, for spelling and for pronunciation for anyone outside the Slavonic world. You're making it easy for us. Exactly. <laughs> what do you do here? Um, at the moment, I'm head of department at the University of Ljubljana of the Department of Translation Studies, and I teach. I teach in Slovenia. In Slovenia, yes, in a small republic uh, in, uh, at the north, at the south of the Alps. Good. And you teach? I teach practical uh, classes of translation, and I teach also um, uh, translation theory, and I teach also literature at the BA. Do you, do you translate or interpret? Um, I do translate, but I, tr I don't translate anymore for money, which I used mm -hmm. to do when I was uh, younger. Um, I translate usually uh, theoretical, philosophical works, uh, mm -hmm. the works that, uh, find, uh, that some people find uh, difficult to get a translator for. Into Slovene? Into, into Slovene, but occasionally also into English for friends. Mm -hmm. Exams and conferences or something. You have excellent French. No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I did finish uh, English and French at the BA level, but uh, I work mainly in, in English today. Okay. Now you've published your research. My book that I've been reading recently is on post socialist translation. Yes. Why post socialist? Well, it's really about socialism. <laughs> it's really about yeah. socialist, but the aim of the book is uh, to empower uh, colleagues from excellent centers in Central and Eastern Europe to focus more on uh, local mm -hmm. translation history and also local translation present mm -hmm. and to, to deal with it and to bring it to the world of TS studies. As opposed to? As opposed to uh, focus on things that may be fashionable at the moment in, in TS research, but are not so much connected with uh, the lives of uh, the centers and also the, the public that supports our research okay. in our environment. Good. When you were in your mid 20s, what, what were you doing? Um, it's good that I prepared. I had to look at the dates to see okay. what was my <laughs> mid-20s. Um, it, it, uh, a lot of things happened when I was in my mid-20s. Um, I was doing my MA in uh, uh, medieval uh, mystics, so in, in literature. Yes. Medieval mystics. It was uh, quite a challenge and quite a brave thing to do because it was still in the socialist times. Mystics, you mean religious? Religious mystics, mystics right? yes. Okay. Uh, and it was a topic that uh, was not at all acceptable for, for, the, uh, for the teachers uh, of that period. You should know that uh, University of uh, did not expel the Faculty of Theology after the war, and it was in the mid 90s that it was reintroduced. Um, so I did that, and it was war. I was also working as an interpreter during these 10 days of war, uh, interpreting for a Canadian uh, journalist mm -hmm. traveling around the, um, at that time, um, devastated parts of Slovenia. Um, only had 10 days. Only 10 days. Compared to compared to the bloodshed, yes, it was it was the beginning of the whole thing, but. Uh, um, it, it was nevertheless quite a shock for us. So a war is, is a shock uh, for everyone. Uh, you are aware of the fragility of the things and the structures you live in. So how did you move from mysticism to translation? Um, 
um, through Derrida, through Jacques, okay. Jacques Derrida. <laughs> Uh, mysticism and uh, deconstruction are not that far away. Um, so I approached uh, mystical writings through Derrida and through reading Derrida I came to the Tour de Babel and through this text to Benjamin Zuf, to Jakobson and the others. Uh, but I also did finish uh, my uh, undergraduate degree was a translation track which was a new thing in the English department. In, you're in Ljubljana. In Ljubljana. I've never, I'm very static. I never moved. I was born, uh, I did my primary, secondary, uh, BA, MA, and PhD in Ljubljana. Uh, but despite of that, you know, I've changed three currencies. I never moved. I changed three currencies in my life. Yugoslav, Slovenian, and then Euro. Um, my grandfather never moved and was a citizen of five different states. <laughs> So the world Yes. So Derrida, Benjamin, um, are not very applicable to translator training, surely, or are they? Um, they are for the development of critical thinking, yes. I think. They are provocative, uh, each of them, um, and uh, they make you think what a mystery translation is. Um, and uh, of course, training has this practical part where a student has to be drilled in it. Uh, but we are all, I, I believe that all translators are also very intelligent uh, individuals and that we need this intellectual input. And this is what actually drew me to, to the field of research. Okay. So, so let's say you did your PhD on, on. I did my PhD on translation into a non mother tongue. Also, oh, it's a complete change. A complete change. Um, okay. As I said, um, it, there, there, were, uh, uh, there was not this kind of research I was doing for, a, for a my MA was, was not really uh, very popular. Um, and I found, I found these topics in, in TS mm. as challenging as the ones I did for PhD. Sure. And then you started teaching? Was that easy? I started teaching. Also, this my decision for uh, doing uh, a, a research in uh, directionality in, in uh, translation away from the mother tongue was also most probably partly influenced by the fact that I was asked to have classes of translation into English. Sure. And it was uh, such a stressful time for me. I was almost the same age as my students, uh, and uh, uh, they challenged me every every single class we had so uh, uh, and it started me thinking whether this is possible <laughs> to do it to do it in fact. but surely the smaller cultures all translate into the native language well in fact uh, this is uh, what our translators do primarily our surveys show that 80 percent of freelancers uh, work only exclusively into away from their mother tongue and this is predominantly English so this is the fact so you started teaching, uh, and then, what happens? And then, and then uh, I started teaching at a newly established uh, department uh, and after a year uh, the university decided to cancel it. So it was a very hard time for us and we fought and this is when I got very much engaged into also administrative things and mm -hmm. being the head of department, which was not initially wish, but uh, I think it's also important to get involved. So you're doing the, things. not just the administration, but the politics? Everything. The it's, politics. It's, it, it means that, yes, I'm also a member of the Senate and so on. I think you have to be quite uh, present in the university structure because things are not, um, we should not take them for granted. Uh, things can change, departments can get closed. Uh, um, and especially now, I think we are more aware of that as we were 20 years ago. But you've been incredibly active on the European stage as well. Well, this was also one of the things I thought that if you um, get a support and if you get um, also positive energy and links uh, outside your environment, that you can help uh, the development of the discipline in, in your realm. I still mm. believe in that. So you've been in the European Society? Studies, the European Masters in 
which I think yes. is really lovely. Yeah, to you yeah. also, yes. Yeah. Um, I believe... And that's you to you as well, or what? <laughs> well, you're around for all these... I believe that we should, uh, that each of us brings uh, their own view of, of uh, uh, what translation is, what translation, translator training, what interpreter training is, um, and that we should uh, bring that to um, this melting point of the, the EU we have mm -hmm. now. Uh, and if that we, if we don't, it's a pity. It's it's less uh, it's less effective and. Uh, by working together, I think we do move things to the better. Do you in any way feel this speak on behalf of the smaller cultures, the languages? Is yes, I, I always feel, not only smaller, I feel more... Uh, How many speakers in this country? Two million, two oh, million yes. speak. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> okay. <But not> Catalan, <laughs> that's it's, it's not only smaller uh, nations, I believe more that uh, um, I would like to represent uh, former socialist uh, yeah. countries because here we do share a lot uh, the education, the training, the similar. Um, and uh, here I regret and I hope it will change. I think that the voice of the Central and Eastern Europe is not, it's, it's very low. Yes, yes. So I guess that leads you to the next question what kind of research should we be doing? Would you like to see more of? In translation studies, um, I am. I have to say, I'm very excited when I see the research uh, of what in the field of what Kaiser Koskinen calls uh, public translation studies. Uh, it is bringing, as she calls it, the knowledge back to the ones we uh, got it from. So I feel that we need to join forces in. Uh, uh, improving training mm -hmm. and also training for um, interpreters and translators coming from recent immigration so not only from the posh languages from the languages of the immigration for public service uh, 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 institutions of, of our states so do you then, mean like short-term training programs for something people? exactly yeah. some kind so that we also give them jobs give them certain visibility Th this i think is an important thing an important thing i find um, uh, all of those who try to raise the status of translators and interpreters in in the society i find it very useful this kind of research uh, um, i was doing also trying to see the manipulations in translations which is a very classical mm -hmm. descriptive research because it is important and significant for the broader public we live in, mm -hmm. um, to see how through translations we uh, were attempted to be manipulated by others. And so I under the socialist regime. For example, yeah. yes, these are the things because these texts are still around, um, and uh, I've seen also that the general public appreciates these kinds of findings, and I think we should bring back. But you don't mean there's zero manipulation now. Of course, there is a this. It's a cause that I'm, here we shouldn't be naive. There is no way we will ever win this battle. But I don't think we should, uh, you know, capitulate completely. That we should go on slowly, uh, trying to reveal and, as Lefebvre said, uh, not uh, uh, let the general public not live in the dark. Mm -hmm. Is it maybe it's too pathetic? But this, it, this is what uh, I believe. Good. We should do something for the other in the society. Excellent. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you.